What's up everybody, Clever Croc back for another Power Rankings video. This time it's for Season 5 of the GTA. Yes, it's time for another season again. And I know I haven't uploaded too much lately. In fact, I think I haven't uploaded in a couple months, except for that Pelipper video that I technically finished a while ago and didn't upload. Um, but we're going to be doing the weekly videos again. So uh, keep an eye out for the recap videos each week. We're definitely going to try and keep up with those. And as you can tell, this is the Power Rankings video. So what that is, is if you guys haven't seen the previous Power Ranking videos, basically me and my two guests, who I'll introduce in a moment, are going to talk about uh, starting with the bottom of our list to the top of our list, which teams we think are going to uh, have the best teams, who we predict to do the best, and then maybe make some predictions at the end as far as what we think will happen this season. Um, as you know, as you guys know, this is our opinion, so it's not fact, it's not something that uh, we necessarily think is going to be the case. In fact, there might be a, a lot of things that we're wrong about as far as how the season will play out. So that's one of the fun things is we make the predictions, you guys uh, think about what you guys think as far as each team goes, and we see how the, the season unfolds. So without further ado, I'll introduce my guests. I've got coach of the Cincinnati Charizards, a.k.a. Isaac Hall. What's up? And your coach of the Wiltshire Wobbuffets, Hamilton Ginsheimer. Back at it again! Woo! And, of course, yours truly, coach of the Kentucky Crocodiles. Oh, yeah, so, that guy. Yeah, that guy, right? <laughs> the guy recording the videos. Um, so, well, I guess we'll go ahead and just jump into it. And so I'll, I'll start off. Um, let's see. I'm going to go with... Mr. Bugman Bays for number 12 on my list with Anti Off, their team, Anti Off, yes. I think that's how you pronounce it. But um, after working through, kind of, <clears throat> I helped him think through some of the list because he's uh, somewhat new to the league uh, format as, as well as competitive. So, uh, as, even though he's played for a little while in Pokemon and he grew up with it and all that good stuff, uh, he wasn't super familiar with some of the things that you would uh, find common in competitive. So I worked through some of the things I thought, uh, uh, I helped him think through kind of what he wanted, but at the same time I also, uh, you know, kind of just wanted to see what, what he kind of wanted to do with his draft, and he definitely wanted to, as you can tell, draft a lot of bugs. <laughs> Um, and he's definitely got some really solid threats, in my opinion. He's got Heracross, he's got Reuniclus, he's got Volcarona and Scizor, Mega Beedrill, and then for a defensive core, I think that's one of my problems, is that, uh, bugs are notorious for not being defensive, other than Scizor, but Scizor has that hidden power, hidden power fire flaw that everybody loves to throw about in the, in the draft format, so... They've got, he's got that to deal with. He's got Empoleon, which is a good option. He's got Mamoswine, who's a good setup and who's a good answer for some of those electric weaknesses. And um, he's, you know, Empoleon can get rid of hazards as well. Mega Beedrill is just a monster with the buff that Mega's got in Gen 7. And Reuniclus is some good bulk as well as Shuckle. But uh, just like the uh, kind of weak part of his draft being defensive, that kind of goes along with the typical bug weakness of rocks. Uh, he's definitely going to struggle with that, in my opinion. Um, which he was willing to, you know, just recognize, and he still wants to do it. And I, I think he still has some potential, but, uh, you know, combined with the fact that he's still new to, this, to the format and everything, he's going to have his uh, work cut out for him. But I'm excited to see what he tries, what he does. Uh, it's, it's interesting because, like any new... Um, coach any new team you don't know what they're do what the, what they'll do you don't know what they're capable of and it's it's gonna you know it's gonna turn out to be an interesting season see what he does so what about you mr. Isaac well Brandon I'm going to have to agree with you on that anti off is definitely my number 12 um, mostly because of all the bugs in there yeah I mean and the fact that setup is prevalent in this kind of format and especially knowing he has that many and I do not see a rapid spinner on his team. Yeah, he's only got uh, defog. So, um, I mean, 
and default is great and all, but still, it is on you, a butterfree. Is the problem? It's also on a butterfree. <laughs> um, so by the time it switches into those rocks, um, and in my opinion, Mega B Drill's biggest advantage is with its speed. It's a great U-turn. Setting up rocks really kills Mega B Drill because it loses that pivot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I mean, I'm. I'm really anxious to see what he does with this team. I see a lot of potential in there. I mean, top null, you give that thing an easy lot and stuff bulk for days. Mm-hmm. Um, Valcarona's a monster. I mean, Mega Beagle's fantastic. Scizor's fantastic. Empoleon's got some nice bulk on it. Mm-hmm. I, I think his team has a lot of potential in here. Um, but seeing that bud weakness just jumping out at me um, really is the reason I put this team at 12. Yeah, I, I would say uh, Empoleon, I think if as long as it doesn't have Defiant as an ability, has the ability to use Defog, but yeah, you're right. Defog isn't always the best answer because if he's going to use Mamoswine to set up, set up Stealth Rocks or just be a suicide lead, he's not going to be able to keep his rocks up for too long. So, Alright, Hamilton, what do you think? Uh, I actually disagree with you guys, and my pick for number 12 is actually the New England Parasects. Oh, okay. There's a couple of reasons for this. It Mainly it's just the um, kind of the very bad direction that their draft took toward the middle, with mm. uh, just Fletchender, Golbat, and Sneasel <laughs> all being grabbed in a row. Like, he has some good stuff on there. Like, there's the Alolan Marowak, which he went very all in on to the but to the point where it kind of affected the rest of his draft. Yeah, like yeah. there's some good there's some good stuff there. He does have a have a pretty okay. He has just a pretty good fire water grass core there with Alolan Marowak, Tangro, and Gyarados, and also Sylveon and Alolan Muk are probably going to be really annoying when uh, when paired together because they do cover a lot of each other's weaknesses pretty well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, but uh, and, and Mega Gyarados is also pretty great. <clears throat> but uh, otherwise, I don't really see much here that's you know, that's really difficult to deal with, especially with a lot of the stuff that's also just in this league specifically. Like a lot, a lot of stuff is going to go uh, like uh, just bowl over these. Like most of the tapus are going to just wreck his team. For example, yeah. like all four tapus are in the pool, and, and two of them are on one team, which we'll get to later. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we we will get to that, and, but uh, yeah, I don't see a lot of cohesion here, and there's just three Pokemon that. Uh, well, okay, Golbat I can kind of see uses because it's a it's a decent defogger, mm. but just Fletchinder and Sneasel might as well be dead slots in my opinion, which means and he's basically coming into this with ten Pokemon as opposed to twelve, yeah. so he's at a very massive disadvantage for the rest of us, even if his ten are decent. And he's got, and he just doesn't have anything that immediately leaps out to me as, oh man, I need to be afraid of this. Like he doesn't have anything that's like, like uh, a Hoopa or like a Tapu Koko or like a Tapu Fini or something along mm-hmm. those lines. Yeah, no, you made some good points. Um, <clears throat> so I guess we'll go ahead and go on to the next section. Uh, number eleven for me was Feliday, and. I have a couple main reasons, not because he didn't have some good draft picks, because I think Alolan Ninetales, Buzzwall, Nidoqueen, Dugtrio, Latias, Smeargle, Whimsicott, Cloyster, they're all really great picks, and Raichu's even a decent pick. My problem is more that he doesn't really have all that great bulk answers. His two Pokemon that I see as potential tanks are both weak to ice. And that would be Needle Queen and Latias. Whimsicott can get kind of bulky, but again, weak to ice. Um, Doug Trio's incredible for just trapping, setting up rocks, being a suicide lead, all kinds of stuff. Buzzwall smashes through teams. Alolan Ninetales is going to wreck house, I think. But his problem, I think, is going to be if he doesn't have the right opportunities to uh, set up or to sw- make the right switches and calls. If, if he makes any bad plays, I think his team will pay for it dearly uh, because I don't think he has any fallbacks in his team. 
And I think he's got Latias, who has Defog. And Cloyster technically has Rapid Spin, but nobody's going to run it that way. So you can kind of uh, expect... Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I just got a message. But, um... Yeah, I, I mean, I guess that's kind of where I'm at. Not enough bulk, in my opinion. What about you, Isaac? Sorry, I forgot to push the button. Um, I'm going to kind of agree with Hamilton's low score on the parasets on this one. Okay. Um, I, and now I, I, I see a lot of potential in his team, and I think his firewater grass score is actually pretty strong. Uh, got has some decent bulk behind it with uh, Lowland Marowak, Tang Growth, and Mega Gyarados. I think that's a solid three. But then expanding his team, he doesn't have a lot more to switch in and out. Yeah. I mean, he, he's got nine, ten Pokemon that's going to really do well, in my opinion. I mean, and not that he doesn't have some good Pokemon, but I don't know. And thus his performances in the past, he hasn't always been the great, greatest. Um, but I really hope he comes out and proves me wrong and just dominates everybody. But that's just kind of my opinion on the matter. All right. Cool. Well, what about you, Hamilton? Uh, 11 is where I ended up uh, placing Anti off. Okay. I, I, do, I do agree with you in the end that their draft tool could be a lot better. But I do think there's a couple things about it that work a bit – that that you maybe possibly didn't consider that do work a bit, bit better. Like, Volcarona and Scizor actually pair very well with each other. Volcarona actually d gets a lot of options that make it very useful. Like, um, there's a there's a, there's a Drizzle user or two running around the, on the pool, which it gets Hurricane. I mean, so it can use... Oh, them. I didn't know that. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so, which is 100% accurate in rain. Um, yeah. Reuniclus can be, and be just a very effective wall. And uh, Beedrill, while yes, it and it and Galvantula do function best as pivot Pokemon, the Mega Beedrill is still some you know, a Pokemon with absolutely absurd attack power and speed, which is it doesn't have to wait a turn to start laying waste to people anymore. <laughs> so that thing, that thing is probably going to steal going to steal him victories. Yeah, is at some point in the in in the games, like I mean, um, he's got a couple things that. I think it, you know, uh, he does have Reuniclus and Shuckle for walling, which, you know, there's better walls, obviously, but, you know, Reuniclus is a Calm Mind user, uh, uh, but uh, overall, yeah, I do agree that it could be a lot better. There's not a lot of cohesion here, especially with the uh, devotion to the bug typing. Mm -hmm. At the very least, he does have two defoggers in Butterfree and Empoleon, so that'll be at least somewhat useful to him. Him. And I, I do think that he is going to have to lean on some Pokemon a bit to the point where it becomes pre he becomes easy to predict, though. Mm. Yeah, I can see what you mean there. Yeah, I didn't know Volcarona got Hurricane. That's pretty interesting. All right. Well, number nine for me is where I actually had the pair. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Uh, the uh, Gengars. We, <laughs> no, real quick interjection. Uh, I think yeah. Butterfree, I think Butterfree gets it too. Hurricane? I can see that. I, I didn't know it, but I could see that. So for me, for number 10, I had the Gengars. And uh, there are some things that I really like about their team. But uh, it's, it's just... So here's the thing. Gengar's great. Pelipper is great. Latios is great. Electros is pretty good. Lilligant is not going to be all that great in rain. I mean, it gets the, you know, the resi the better resistance against fire if rain is up. And Kabutops is great in rain. Um, and he's used Kabutops before in rain. So he's experienced with it. So that's a good thing. Since you know he's pretty good. User. Yeah, he's got a Thunder user. And Bronzong is a great wall. My problem is it's still kind of the... Bronzong is really the only dedicated wall he has. Pelipper can be really bulky. Latios can kind of be a tank. 
And so I guess can Lilligant or Electros. And I mean, I won't count out Wobbuffet, but Wobbuffet's a one trick pony. You best not. Wobbuff I will say Wobbuffet's a one trick pony. It's good at what it does, oh, sure. but. But it, you know, you could just toxic stall it all day. <laughs> and since you can't use Shadow Tag on Smogon, it's it's just not as useful as it could be. Sadly. Wait, why can't you? Wait, when did that happen? Why can't you use Shadow Tag? Anymore? Shadow Tag's been banned since uh, sometime early Gen Six when, um, what's her face, uh, the Gen Five Psychic type Pokemon. What's she called? Uh, Goth. Gothitelle. Yeah, Gothitelle. She wrecked house, and so they, you know, she was like almost banned to Ubers until they banned Shadow Tag, and then she was no longer all that useful. Oh yeah, and, I forgot they banned Shadow Tag. Yeah, so Wobbuffet, you know, if he had Shadow Tag, it would be so much higher, and it would have cost him a lot more to get. But with all that considering, he has a, the potential to have a really strong rain team. But I also don't see an electric immunity outside of Manectric, which I'm all for having uh, immunities Electros. through types. Oh no, wait, that's ground. I'm, I'm yeah, done. I'm I'm all for having like electric immunities uh, through like you know Jolteon as Volt Absorb, Lantern as Volt Absorb. Those are great, but in my opinion, it's better to have a, a dedicated true immunity in addition to those things. So uh, I still think that it's a it's a dangerous game to play. But I think he could pull off a lot of stuff, which is why I put him at number 10 and not lower. What about you, Isaac? Uh, this is where I put Felidae. Okay. Um, so, looking at their team, I've seen like, a lot of things you did. They don't have a lot of bulk outside of things that are weak to ice. And uh, just in general, a lot of their team is weak to ice. I also noticed they don't have a Mega, which I know is not necessarily a live or die thing, but let's face it, it could come in handy. I mean, even the Crookediles have a Mega that's considered better as a non-Mega, but at least they have one that if they needed it to be Mega, they could. Um, True. In this situation, there's not one there. I understand they have Buzzwoe, which is an Ultra Beast, but... Eh. And, and Cloister's top uh, top tier Pokemon in the draft. I mean, but it hasn't done that great recently since we're starting to everybody starting to figure out how to counter it. So it's mm -hmm. it, his team's just kind of up in the air for me. He yeah. he has some good good ones on there, but he also I don't know. It's just not a great build. Yeah, I can see that. You know what? Uh, now that you mention it, I also didn't necessarily think about the fact that Maple Grove Gengars also don't have a Mega. So that's another kind of count against them. Is I just think wall cores are so important. And I know like we'll get to this probably, but I don't have the best wall core. So I'm aware of that. Uh, but that's one of my biggest concerns is not having the right immunities or wall cores to kind of be the base of your team. But... Uh, what about you, Hamilton? What did you put at number 10? I placed the Gengars at 10. Okay. Yeah, this, um, the whole rain thing that they got going, uh, it seems a little half-baked, to be honest. Like, you got, you got Pelipper, which sets rain. Bronzong can use Rain Dance and be a somewhat decent rain setter just because mm -hmm. of how bulky it is. Yeah. And... But really, the only things you have that benefit off the rain, enough to bother running it, are Pelipper and Kabutops. And I guess you lose a bit of the fire weakness on Lilligan and Bronzong, but how significant is that? Yeah. And he's also just got a couple of things that are not really that, just not really that great. Like, uh, Seviper is the one that re that kind of leaps out to me as, mm -hmm. why? Why would you not? I, like, I, it's good to have a poison type. With how much better fairy type has become, but there's also way better choices. Like yeah, he that. has Gengar already. Yeah, he yeah he also he has a Gengar already. But even uh, but like Survivor is kind of bottom of the barrel for poison types. Like um, Weezing would be better. Harbuck. <laughs> well, not not 
Mm. Yeah. Glare and Coil. I mean, that's still better than Sviper, who just has Glare. Yeah, but it's it's very it's very close. And yeah, yeah. And even and though it is my mascot, I have uh, uh, I did not choose Wobbuffet as my mascot for battle ability. I chose it because <laughs> I like it, and and. and Purely because of the anime and Team Rockets. Yeah. Effect, really. And I think that I think that was what everybody would pick it for. But um, yeah. yeah, Wobbuffet, especially with Shadow Tag being banned, it's just so easy to play around. Yeah. At this point, all like all you gotta do is just all you gotta do is just switch in like your guy that has Toxic, or your guy that can just one shot it with a super effective attack. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out as a bone to Felidae, uh, if they can manage to match up against Wobbuffet and bring Doug Trio with Toxic, we'll be able to set up all day. <laughs> this is true. But, uh, yeah, you know, you actually pointed something out there. It is kind of, I, I guess as you said, half-baked. Kind of goes along with the with what I was saying in that, you know, they're kind of setting themselves up for, to get sweeped by another electric type almost. If Manectric can't handle it, you know, like Jolteon would be really good against this guy's team because Jolteon also is immune to Electric and yeah, like still Hat, has coverage. Just, uh, yeah, you could just uh, throw Thunder on your special attacker of choice at this point. Yeah, well, and also, that, that's that's why I think, especially like with this case, if he had something like Gastrodon or even a Seismitoad who has a water immunity in addition to being a ground type, Seismitoad would be wonderful. On that this team. would make this team so much better, and he'd probably go up a couple places for me. But because he has such a a frailty to his own setup, in my opinion, that really kind of hurts him. So, and he can't really he doesn't have any any wall that can truly take take those kind of hits other than Latios. The Latios. Incineroar also very much puzzles me. Yeah, with a rain team. All right, well, let's go ahead and go on to number nine, who now I have the pair nine, of six. Nine! <laughs> so uh, the reason I put them a little bit higher than I think you guys is because I really like Sylveon and Snorlax and Tangrowth. That bulk is kind of nuts. Uh, Alolan Marowak hits like a truck. If you can get him in safely, he's going to one-shot most things <laughs> or, you know, do 75% to practically anything. Alolan Muck is actually way better than I thought he was going to be when Gen 7 originally came out. Gyarados and Umbreon, some more great bulk and offense. Beware is actually good because of Fluffy. Um, it, it makes him pretty versatile. But... I like Fluffy! Stitch. Oh, I watched that movie the other day. But, uh... Gyarados being his only water type, I... And again, he's a little bit better off than the Gengars are because he has two electric immunities through abilities, being Lightning Rod on Alolan Muck and uh, Motor Drive from Electivire. But I really... You mean Alolan Marowak? Yeah, did I say Alolan Muck? I meant Alolan Marowak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, like, he's got a resistance in Assault Vest Tangrowth, but that would be the only way he could really take hits from an electric type other than those immunities and he's got so many weaknesses or just neutral hits to th common things like earthquake and elect and you know thunderbolt he's got tank growth but if he can you know bring some if it's not assault vest then he's gonna have a hard time being able to take hits the way he needs to and sylveon's great too but i'd also say overall his team is fairly slow in comparison to most of the other teams um i think his fastest pokemon is actually Sneasel at 110 base speed, so which is which is fine, and Sneasel can do a decent amount with a Life Orb, still. Excuse me, but uh, I don't know. I think there's some. I also just noticed he's got a decent fighting weakness too, um, to the things that he'd probably actually bring. So, just some things I guess that he needs to consider as far as when he brings things, what he needs to be aware of that his opponent might have, and all that good stuff. So. What about you, Isaac? Um, this is where I have the Gengars. I know both y'all had them last round, but uh, this is kind of where I put them. Um, my my bottom four was all kind of a bit of a toss up, and I had them all fairly close. Because mm -hmm. um, I had a clear bottom four, in my opinion. Um, but 
I mean, just a lot of the things you all said, they – sure, they have Pelipper, which is great on a rain team, and Cobble Tops, also great on a rain team. But kind of what else do they have to go for that? If Mega Manetric was released, I think they would probably have a really good – at least a fairly good rain team, being able with that speed and thunder um, combo, and Gengar's a really good mon. But – it's kind of everything else. It's where's he kind of going with this? Mm. Uh, so that's just kind of where I see this, and I I hope these bottom four, at least the four that I have in my bottom, are going to prove me wrong and do well in the season. Okay. Yeah, you know it's funny uh, now that you mention that. Looking at the Gengars, they also have what I mentioned with the Parasects and that their fastest Pokemon is 110 base speed. And this is just personal preference, but in my opinion, you should have at least one Pokemon that's a little bit faster than that, even if it's only by one point, because that's a really common speed tier for a lot of sweepers. So, But uh, what about you, Hamilton? Uh, this is where I place the Felidae. Okay. They've got a couple of good things here. Like uh, I myself have used Nido Queen in a past season, and of course, you know Cloyster has just got a humongous reputation in this league by this point. And um, there, there is not a lot of cohesion here, and er, and not a lot of bulk, but they do have a couple of things that can very can just sneaky kill people. Mm-hmm. And they do have, and they also do have Latias, which is just all around a very solid mod. Smeargle, which can be pretty much whatever you want it to be, it, uh, if that whatever you want it to be is not attacking per se. <laughs> and then they've got Buzzwall, which is just a absolute monster. And um, I don't know, there's not, uh, there's not a whole uh, anything out here that really jumps out at me as incredible, but that, uh, but. There is definitely potential here, and also, I recall last season, I remember the Fela Day specifically um, as very much impressing me with how much they had improved from Season 3, especially in the first couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm very open-minded about this, and, and I'm anxious to see where they go with this, because I think they could, this could potentially work out very well for them, especially yeah. because... There is something to be there is something to be said for nothing immediately jumping out, out at me, which is that they are they could be very easily underestimated by their opponents. Yeah, that's for sure. And with stuff and with stuff like Buzzwall or Dugtrio or even Cloyster, if you if you miscalculate with those, you can just straight up die instantly. Yeah. Yeah, those are some good points. I definitely think he has a lot of potential to really be uh, a scary threat to to go up against this season. So, uh, so I guess we'll go ahead and go to number eight, uh, which is the start of the second four, the middle four, if you want to call it. Uh, and just like Isaac was saying, I kind of had those, which I think we all did, just have the same bottom four, but in different orders. Uh, it'll probably, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like the next four are pretty pretty you know they're probably not going to be in the same order but i feel like they're pretty much like i think we know kind of who falls in there so for me I, this one and the next two i really could have switched all back and forth and i ended up putting them in this order mainly because of previous experience and what pokemon they have and and just kind of being able to anticipate what they bring so, next I have the Cincinnati Charizards, um, which was tough for me because they have some really, some really tough stuff to deal with. Looking on paper, you've got Toxapex, which literally, <laughs> when it was uh, the Captain's Clash and I had it on my team, I called it unkillable, and it's pretty much unkillable if you don't have Tapu Lele. <laughs> I mean that's that's literally like pretty much what it is. It's <laughs> that or a really strong electric type like Thunderous or, or Zapdos or or something like that. So you know it's it's a monster. So a great pick as far as a wall core goes. And speaking of wall core, he's still he's got Shinotic, which is a pretty good specially bulky uh, monster. He's got Mudsdale, uh, who's also pretty darn bulky. Um, and then he's got you know so that's that's pretty good. Um, 
And then he's also got Mega Mawile, Hydreigon, Thunderous, Mimikyu as, you know, some pretty outstanding physical and special threats. He's got Decidueye, who can be pretty unpredictable, because I think he can be special or physical, and he's got priority in trapping. Uh, mm -hmm, yeah, he gets uh, both of the uh, double boosting moves for uh, Attack, Sword Stance, and Nasty Plot, and Baton Pass. Yeah, so he can do, like, he's going to be really unpredictable. Um, and then he's got Porygon 2, which is also another really solid tank. Um, but I think what, <laughs> some of it might be a matter of preference, but I think there's a pretty common weakness to ground here, especially among his, uh, his walls. Um, so, you know, he's, he's got Shinotic, who's a grass type, who can eat it up. He's got Decidueye, who can eat it up. He's got one flying type and one, you know, one Levitate Mon and Hydreigon. Uh, he's got he's got a pretty solid team overall as far as type goes. He's got a pretty solid offense, offense and defense, but it's in my opinion it's just still a bit too slow. Kind of like what I was saying before. But this is a matter of preference. I think his fastest Pokemon is Thunderous with 331 speed max speed, and then he's got Hydreigon, who's a good choice scarfer, so that can be solved that way. But at 324 max speed, and then I think uh, the next one after that is 322 speed on Mimikyu. So, you know, but he's also got, he's got two Pokemon who can use Shell Smash, which can solve the speed problem. He's got Decidueye, who gets Agility, Sword Stance, and I think Nasty Plot. And he's got some other things in his walls. The things that are slow can take hits. And he's got a Lilman Golem, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I guess now that I realize, I don't think Turtonator gets... Rapid Spin, which means that I don't think he has, uh, well, I think Decidueye gets Defog, so, but that would be his only way of getting rid of Hazards, and he doesn't, he doesn't have the biggest problem with Hazards, but not being able to get rid of Hazards in general, or having a difficult, uh, way to get rid of it is typically a problem, uh, in my opinion, from what I've experienced, so, that's kind of why I ended up putting the Charizards here. What about you, Isaac? Um, I'm going to disagree with you on this. Um, That's totally okay. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Considering I'm the Charizards. Yeah. <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite part of that whole exchange was how uh, uh, Brandon talked about him as uh, Isaac, so he weren't there. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, we got to keep it neutral, guys. I'm not going to point him out and be like, man, your team has these flaws. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I really like the criticism, and I know my team's slow, but uh, I know from past experience, I don't do well with fast sweepers. I never have. I do a lot better with bulky sweepers, as seen with mm -hmm. Chestnut. Or I don't really typically run Victini fast. I run him um, with special attack and attack and run him mm -hmm. both with either a Scarf or a Life Orb. So, yeah. uh, so me personally, I don't typically run the fast sweeper, which is why I don't have that fast Pokemon. Anyways, mm -hmm. um, my my spot here would have to be the Skeptiles, um, the, the Scottish Skeptiles. And now my reasoning is um, we, uh, as you'll see, my, they're, they're new. We don't really know that much about them, how they're going to play. I agree they have a great team. Um, and the reason I put them eight instead of seven, and I'll, I'll go into more detail on my seven, is because they pit Zard Y instead of Zard X. Um, yeah, that, and, that stuck out to me too. And I mean, and it's not that Mega Zard Y is bad, but Gregalgy as your dragon type, when you could have had Charizard X, I think it would have just fit his team so much better. And honestly, he probably would have, even being a new player, skipped a few spots on my team, but that 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 one choice, being the Charizards and somebody picking the wrong Charizard, I guess just killed it for me. Okay. Yeah, I can see what you mean. There's a couple things I didn't really notice about that. Um, what about you, Hamilton? Yeah, I uh, I have also put uh, the Scottish Septiles there. Uh, I hope you were that. <laughs> Don't insult them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, I was... Um, for the, for the listeners here, when we were doing the draft, I was actually in the same room as Brendan and Isaac, and 
I recall looking over at him and, and kind of like raising my eyebrow when he mentioned that he was going to have Charizard Y as his me- as his Mega and not X. Like, like I've used uh, I used X in my um, first season here and uh, can confirm it's a monster. It is an <laughs> absolute monster in single player, and I just really don't understand why it's here because what does drought really offer this team mm-hmm. it gives you like um solar beam on shaman i don't know really and uh yeah it's just really confusing as to me why he would want the drought there but uh he does have a couple of good pokemon uh raikou and tornadus just some work as a very very powerful pivot core all mm-hmm. uh, and then he's got Don Fan to act as a spinner, which will keep his core going. Really, his team just, le- just kind of reads as a who's who of legendary Pokemon, really. He's got Tapu Fini. He's got Cresselia, which, mm-hmm. my God, those two are going to be an annoying defensive core. They're, we're never going to get rid of those things. You kidding me? <laughs> and then he's got, but, uh, he's got Terrakion and Tapu Bulu as very effective physical attackers. Jirachi, which is, very, which is efficient at being annoying. <laughs> and um, and uh, yeah, he's got a lot of good stuff here, but uh, I don't quite know where to or to like really gauge him because, as you guys said, he's a new player, and also wh- oh, choosing Charizard Y just really sticks out to me as the wrong decision to make. Mm. Like especially yeah, especially because yeah, I would much rather have a Mega Charizard X than a Dragalge any day of the week, especially when you already have. Of um, a top of a Buffini, which acts as a very good wall, a Cresselia, which acts as a very good wall, which Dragalge is decent as a special wall, mm-hmm. but not when you have a Cresselia and a top of Fini. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, Mega Charizard X has, I think, consistently been in the top three as far as kills go in the in the league. Uh, so, I would not be surprised. Yeah, I could see. You know, that definitely being a, a challenging choice there. Um, so we'll go ahead and go on to number seven. And for number seven, I had the Richmond Rikos, which is probably maybe a bit controversial. <laughs> I don't know. I I looked at this team. At first, I was like, this this team is actually really scary. And then I started to think about some of the other like threats that were in the on other teams now. And though they have some really good stuff, I... I'm not convinced that, I don't know, they have some good stuff, and, you know, you've got Arcanine who can be good at bulk, I mean, Arcanine's just great in the draft format because he can be in, like, all kinds of stuff for you. Mandibuzz has proven to be really tough to kill, uh, Delmise, great spinner, and a Grass Ghost type is a really good type in my opinion. You've got Sharpedo who's done really good, Ambipom who's good, Zygarde, I'm not really sure why he had Flygon and Zygarde, um, because... Yeah, that's yeah. that's basically total redundancy. Yeah, I I think uh, he probably picked up Flygon because he wanted something cheap, and then he realized he could also get Zygarde. I definitely think Zygarde is the better choice, but if you notice, the thing that I... I like that he has a bunch of variety, but he doesn't, in my opinion, have any dedicated walls except for Florgus. And... Though Delmise and Arcanine and Mandibuzz, well, Mandibuzz is kind of a designated bulk as well, but yeah, Arcanine, if, you're, if you're using a Mandibuzz, it's 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 purely to defend, really, and disrupt. Yeah, but if you notice, uh, other than that, like his team is well rounded in speed and everything, but the only hazard removal he has is def. No, he has rapid spin. I just said that. Uh, the hazard removal is only defog from Mandibuzz and Flygon. And, or, why did I just say that? <laughs> he doesn't have hazard setup at all. That's what I meant to get to, not hazard removal. He well, doesn't have actually, stealth rocks, as well, far actually, as I know. He, he sort of does have hazard setup, it's just, it's conditional, in that he has to switch in Espeon on a set rock. Oh, yeah, but, I mean, Magic Bounce is great, but I think not having any sort of hazards, except maybe spikes somewhere if I don't see it. That's... I think Flygon can maybe get rocks. I actually looked. He doesn't, surprisingly. I thought he did, too. But mm, same with Zygarde and, and Magirna, or Magirna. They don't get it either. 
So I was I was really surprised, and that's actually, I don't know. I think that's a big deal not having the ability to set up rocks, even as an option, even if you don't run it, um, or, or any hazards for that matter. So I think that's kind of a a pretty big detriment in my opinion. I like some of the stuff he can do, but Glaceon, eh. Flygon is great because he has a buff, but it, with the you know having Zygarde too, I just didn't see the reason to have both. But other than that, I mean, it's a solid team. It's definitely great. Um, there's just those few things that I was concerned about. So, what about you, Isaac? Um, I'm going to have to go with the final new guy on the um, thing. Okay. And I, I think, honestly, my top... The Sylveons? Eight, yes, the Sylveons. Um, I honestly think my top eight is sort of a toss-up. Um, and the reason I put my seven and eight in these two slots is simply because they're new and we haven't seen them. Because um, I base a lot of my um, reasoning on play styles more, and I, I know you're going with more what they have and what options they have. Mm -hmm. um, I try to pick more based on their play style and if their Pokemon they've drafted and kind of fit into that um, play style that they have. I think people perform so much better with Pokemon that perform in a way they're comfortable with. Sure. Um, so, sure. so that that is why I have Sylveon's kind of here. And as I said, I have them with the Skeptiles because Skeptiles pick Zard Y instead of Zard X. So. Okay. What about you, Hamilton? Um. I uh, uh, this, just watch. Chase is gonna come back and just destroy me at some point in this week. <laughs> like, um, there's a lot of good stuff. And when I looked at it initially, I was like, "Oh yeah, this looks good." And then like the crack started the show, like the lack of hazards, mm -hmm. and the fact that his best uh, that like um, he's got Glaceon and stuff like Glaceon and Ambipump. I like Ambipump a lot, and I used it, and uh, I realized it's not actually that amazing and mm -hmm. really is because it's moveful as shallow as all get up. Yeah. Like you got It's really sad. Like, <laughs> when, you, when you kinda gotta count on water pulse for coverage, you're really hard up for options. Mm hmm And um yeah, Magirna is pretty is pretty good. Sharpedo is pretty good. Zygarde is pretty good. The, the thing is like um these are kind of individual threats and I don't see a good like a good structure. Yeah. Going yeah. going through this, uh, like um, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is because I'm not seeing. But uh, I think this team really wishes it had an actual steel type, not an honorary one like Delmice. Is that uh? Oh well, he's got Magirna, I guess. Yeah. Right? But uh, I think this team really wants more a defensive steel type, to be honest. Uh, and. I don't know. I'm not really sold on Magirna in singles. I'm really more sold on it in doubles. Where yeah, just, yeah. Where I can just rack up soul heart boosts in boosts like nobody's business and just murder everything. And yeah, Flygon and Zygarde are just completely redundant. There's no reason to use Flygon if you have a Zygarde. Sad mm -hmm. as that is for me to say because I love Flygon, which means he's basically got a dead slot. You can run Flygon special. It's inferior to the physical set completely. But you can do it, so it does have that run that going for it, I suppose. But uh, yeah, I don't really know if this is going to come together. But uh, you know, he's um, he's beaten me with stuff that I did not think he was going to be able to. So he could he could prove me wrong. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I think uh, moving on to number six, like I said, the the past two and this next one. I honestly could, you know, be swapped in and out. Um, but I put my, the Kentucky Crocodiles at number six um, for a couple of reasons. So the main reason being it's just a lot of a lot of frail Pokemon. Um, I have a couple, you know, as the coach of the Crocodiles, I see that I have a couple pretty solid tanks you know i think i have you know the potential to do some really cool stuff i think my strengths uh lie in being incredibly unpredictable which is why i put myself above the past two uh because 
Except for, you know, maybe Garchomp and Kartana. Like, I think I can be... And, and maybe, you know, Salazzle. I think everything else... And maybe Jellicent. But, like, I guess what I'm trying to say is... I just don't feel like it will be easy to prep for me. Because Silvalli can be any type I want it to be. So if they prep... If Silvalli ends up performing the way I think it will... They'll never be able to really prep for him all that well. Like, they'll be able to prep kind of for his move pool, but not his typing. Or whether he's physical or special or bulky. Um, so, the only downside to him is that he is lower... He doesn't have any stat that's, like, necessarily great, but he's average across the board. And the fact that he can be anything uh, is, is, in my opinion, the reason he could potentially be one of the best Pokemon in the draft format. Um, Mew, again, Mew's done great in the league, and Mew is just, I'm really excited to use him because you can do anything with him too. Kartana, I was not planning on picking up, I'll be honest, but I am glad I did because Kartana rips through teams if you can't outspeed it, and it, it's just really good. Swellow is great because he's really fast, and when that with that special attack buff, he can be physical or special, so that adds to the unpredictability there. Uh, Garchomp is great, and having it as, an, uh, as, as a mega option is great too. And then having, you know, things like Dodrio and Heliolisk and Chestnut and some of these other Pokemon, like, they're great. Um, they're not the best at what they do, I'll admit that, but I think the fact that they're so unpredictable is kind of why I put myself here. So, what about you, Isaac? I'm going to start with, I think you're highly underestimating yourself. <laughs> okay. um, I'll, I'll get to you when I get to you, um, which will be several people later. But um, I, I kind of rank the Rakos here. Um, partly because he's one of my best friends, and I don't want to put him above me. But um, <laughs> also, uh, I mean, I, I kind of see where y'all are, are talking about not being able to set up. Um, especially with one of the teams um, being very weak to rocks, um, it'd be very convenient to have somebody who can just throw out a set of rocks and be like, okay, now I've already got to step up on this team. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know that Chase typically uses um, set up a lot, so I don't think it's going to hurt him really that much. Um, and I see a lot of Pokemon that I think he's going to do really well with, and um, Mega Sharpedo I've seen in the past when I used it uh, last season, um, it did really well, and um, I think he just has a lot of potential in this team, and I I do see where you all are coming from with Flygon and Zygarde, um, but also note Flygon does have Levitate, so there is that slight reason on maybe why Flygon would be used in a match over Zygarde. Just okay. a thought. Yeah, no, that's a good point. What about you, Hamilton? Uh, this is where I have placed the Sylveons, and uh, I recall thinking during the draft, I, I recall thinking at one point, man, that's a, that's a lot of threats they're getting just racked up over here. Like, we got look at it, we got Kirin Black, we got Landorus T. We got uh we got Gliscor, which is or which is my favorite Pokemon of all time. Sadly, uh, relegated to UU status. You there? Few things that he ain't here that. Oh wait, like, you are, broke out a like, little bit. Okay, but oh, did I? Yeah, you're good now. Okay, um, should I repeat what I just said? Yeah, just uh, like five seconds back. Okay, yeah. But yeah, he's got a lot of very powerful things in here. There's the Kieran, which is just very useful as either a lead. There's some, there's this. Some, probably superior to Blastoise, especially since he's already got pretty decent sweepers in Keldeo and Kieran. Mm. But there's a couple of things here that are also very good, like, um, Earthring has two abilities that work very well if you like stick up Toxic Orb or Flame Orb on it. Although personally, I always recommend the Quick Feet since the speed is generally something you need more. 
And then um, even though it's just a Esther Ribambi, never underestimate the power of, of a quiver dancer. Or and, a fairy type that's fast. Yeah, that too. Well, and just uh, Keldeo and Zapdos. And man, Kieran Black is a monster. I think it is a little a little bit worse than it was last season because of all the fairy types we have running around now that it just finds a little harder to answer. Like, this thing can't really answer Tapu Fini all that effectively. I, well, I, I guess it could. Well, I guess it could just fusion bolt it, and it would probably be fine. But I don't know if it's one shot, and then it would just get wrecked by a, by a moon blast. But uh, I think there's a lot of promising stuff here, especially with Landorus T and Infernape being very efficient leads. And he's got a lot of good bulk with Gliscor and Togetic if he if and Milotic. I'm assuming he's putting Eviolite on Togetic most of the time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think he, I think he's got a very good shot at this. Yeah, you've actually uh, got some good points. That's actually why I have at number five the Sylveons. Um, I put the Sylveons at five, being at the top of the middle four, because there's like I, I did a little bit of comparing between placing. So I looked at like my team and the Ra- the Raikos and the Charizards, and then some of the ones. <laughs> above or that I put above the Sylveons and I tried to compare like how they would probably match up and who has the better matchup and stuff and against my team and against the Rikos team in my opinion they wiped the floor uh obviously that's just on paper the coach has to be able to play the game right in order to do any of what we what I say um as far as matchup goes if I am right on that uh Having Landers and Gliscor was one thing I didn't really understand. Uh, he has plenty of ice resistances for the ones that are weak to ice, because he has four ice weaknesses? Five. Five ice weaknesses. And he's got decent speed, uh, having Ribombi, Infernape, Caldeo as speed options. And Zapdos and Kyra and Black are good, fast, bulky type Pokemon. Um, but I noticed... A little bit in and this may or may not have affected my order but they don't have any psychic resist or resists right or we or in immunities for that matter so you know something like Mega Alkazam or Tapu Lele or even Espeon is gonna Tapu be able Lele to have all kinds it. yeah is gonna be able yeah, to have all kinds of fun with this team because he doesn't have a switch in for anything, you know, he has to let whatever is in go down against something like that. So that's kind of a huge problem, in my opinion. Um, so even though he has a bunch of great threats, I think that's a pretty big problem uh, as far as defensive core goes. But other than that, I mean, it's a solid team. Solid team. So uh, what about you, Isaac? What did you have at number five? Number five, this is where I finally put myself in. Um, as I said earlier, I'm, I'm not really good at using the fast sweepers as, as much as... Um, and, and I did great with Sharpedo, um, I know, but at the same time, um, I just know... Like, the time I use Chestnut to sweep, or stuff like that, I feel like I have more diversity in a bulky sweeper than I do in others and a lot of my gameplay is based on diversity within Pokemon and pulling strategies out of my rear end that nobody <laughs> else would have thought of. Um, I mean, I, I kind of like to think of myself as one of the more creative coaches. Just doesn't mean good coaches, but one of the more creative coaches out there um, as far as coming up with crazy things to do. Um, I also think Mega Mawwow, I mean, it was in Ubers kind of for a reason. I personally don't think it should have hit Ubers. Um, I think it should have been Upper OU, but I can kind of see why they had it in there. Um, also, Toxic Pets is just a wall, and mm-hmm. I think Toxic Pets pairs with Hydreigon fantastically. Toxic yeah. Pets has three weaknesses, and it's uh, Psychic, Ground, and Electric. Hydreigon's immune to two of those and then has a resistance to the other. Along Ooh, I having, didn't even see that. Yeah, it's along, a good core. Along with having Thundor T to just vote absorb the electric, I don't even have to switch in Hydreigon or use Mudsdale to absorb the electricity. 
Um, and honestly, I built a lot of my team around the weaknesses of Tatsa Pets to absorb that, to kind of create a heavy wall in my team, um, more so than a lot of my past teams that have been built more around a ta- an attacker and trying to keep it alive. Um, and it may completely collapse under me this season, and I may do horribly, um, but I'm hoping that it just works out well for me. I think you got a good point. I definitely think your team defensively is really well built. So, what about you, Hamilton? Uh, this, uh, Brandon, is actually where I placed you. Okay. So, yeah, you've got a lot of very interesting stuff here, including just two of quite possibly the most diverse Pokemon to ever walk the Earth in Mew and Silvalli, which Silvalli is just basically mini Arceus. And yeah. <laughs> Then you've got very very effective sweepers in terms of Garchomp and Salazzle. Heliolisk acts as a very good pivot. You've got Comfey for being for cleric duties. Is um, Jellicent I have used before as a wall, and it is very efficient. A little frailer on I think it was the physical side than you would yeah. think, but otherwise you've also got Cartana as well, which can get very out of hand if you and if you can't immediately deal with it. If that thing gets a beast boost, or, and, and just going to run away with the game at that point. Yeah. Um, Swello is something that, that you can uh, can very quickly get out of hand and can be very difficult to stop, especially if you're going with the uh, turn one protect to get a uh, guts activation. And um, Crocodile can also just snowball very effectively with Moxie. It's a good, so- good, uh, good solid team. It's a very good solid team that I can't really find anything necessarily necessarily wrong with other than I kind of wish you had I don't know like you do have, have some very some Pokemon that are very fast and hit very hard but I, I for some reason I think your team kind of wishes it had a fast Pokemon that had some better types to it I don't know I don't know what specifically would help here but I guess you do have Still Valley, which can fill pretty much any hole that you really need filled, type-wise. Yeah, I, I, I can see what you mean. Uh, I was thinking the same thing when I really looked uh, at all these teams and I looked at mine, and I've tested a couple things out. And I'm excited to try a lot of stuff, but I mean, I'll, I'll say it, I don't think this is my best draft. Um, not my worst. No, definitely not my worst, but... Not my yeah, best. Your, yeah. yeah, your best. Uh, well, to be fair, it is it is pretty hard to beat your season three team. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I guess number four for me, the bottom of the top four, is actually where I had the septiles, which is pretty different from what you guys had, considering he was the bottom yeah, of the middle wildly four. Wildly different, you. yeah. Um, but like I said, I did a little bit of comparison comparison um, on paper as far as matchups go to the things I put above and below it and it just thrashes my team especially Raikou and Tornadus uh, that core uh, or that, that Volturn core is going to be a pain in the butt to deal with uh, I think it thrashes a lot of teams below it uh, Mega Charizard Y hits it crushes almost every wall and since Chansey or Blissey were not drafted which are some of the main things that would wall it, and Tapu Fini uh, is, you know, something that would also be somewhat of an answer. It's got very few things that can survive two hits from it, you know, and so you switch some, you switch in the thing that can take the hit, you know, but it takes over 50% or close to it, and then gets knocked out the next turn. So it's it's more dangerous than we than you know this is the first debut of it being in a in a dedicated singles season so I'm really excited to see what they do with it. Jirachi can be so dangerous because it can be all kinds of stuff. It can really cause problems for teams. Cresselia is a monster, and having Tapu Bulu and Tapu Fini is gonna be it's gonna be rough, <laughs> uh, just to say the least. There's no glaring weaknesses that I can really see. I mean. When I think, oh, they have an ice weakness, or oh, they have a fighting weakness, they have things that cover that really well. The only thing I guess I'll say if I really had to pick something is I wish they had a ghost, a ghost type. <laughs> um, and then 
Yeah, I mean, they have their electric community and Don fans, so... I don't know. That, that's kind of what I think. I think it's a very well-built team. There's some things that definitely could be better, but I think the fact that they have so many options that are really good and they can cover all kinds of, you know, weaknesses pretty well. Uh, the only thing I guess I'll gripe at beyond that is not having a psychic immunity again, uh, just as the Sylveons don't. So I think that's that's the only thing they really have to worry about, in my opinion. So, what about you, Isaac? Um, this is where I put the Wobba Fetch. Um, hey! <laughs> um, and... At, I mean, at, th at this point, I'm just kind of throwing together where I think we're going to kind of end up based on how we've played before and kind of what we have. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I think any – now, don't get me wrong. Any of the 12 can – You there? Yeah, you cut out. You, you cut out, you cut out some. Thing. Just throw that in at uh, the end. Hey. Of the hey. There you are. Okay. Hey. So what were you saying? I uh, know. Yes, go, go on about praising me, please. Uh, well, I mean, I, I don't have an awful lot of bad to say from this point on. I mean, the Wobba Fetch uh, have a solid wall core in Arachnid, Major Venusaur, and Heatran. I mean, they, they just work really well. Gudra is really good. Um, they have Tapu Lele, Alolan Raichu. They, they've just got a ton of really good Pokemon in here. And I mean, Haunch Crow, Gastrodon, Drapion, a lot of these don't count them out. Uh, I, I just think that we can see a lot of really good stuff here. Okay. Why, well, thank you, sir. What about you, Monsieur Hamilton? Uh, this is where I place the Cincinnati Charizards, and I'm, I'm going to level with you. They actually swapped her up right, you, like, right before I uh, put you at five. <laughs> and and uh, it's because I'm noticing, uh, I'm kind of just now noticing this team and really like, seeing how it's constructed. Really, my my, uh, my top four here are kind of, can really go in pretty much any order. Uh, really, like, these are where it gets really down to just s small, tiny details. But, um, like, you don't, uh, don't exactly have, you don't exactly have the traditional kind of defensive core, but it's just very difficult to get around, especially because you building it around tox effects like you have. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it is uniquely designed to just really be absolutely punishing and annoying. And then you have really the ones that stick out to me the most here. You have Mimikyu and Barbarical, which can come in and just sweep a, a team that's weakened down by uh, a, the poison and all the other, other chip damage you're getting in. They can sweep a team out of nowhere, especially because you have a Decidueye that can baton pass this to a disguise ready Mimikyu, so it just comes in, absorbs a hit with no damage, and then just is free to sweep. Or you send a Barbarical, Shell Smash, you, uh, you survive on one HP because you have a Focus Sash, I'm assuming, or you just Choice Scarf it. Or you just Choice Scarf High Dragon, bring that in. You just clean up house. Mm -hmm. uh, like, mm. Don't forget about Turtonator. It gets Shell Smash too, and it can be physical or special. This is true. Yeah, like I'm really, really, it's kind of brilliant. Really, just how, how this team will just absolutely wreck anyone who does not really analyze pretty much every decision they make. Like, yeah. we, I am not going to be able to afford any wasted moves when we eventually <laughs> face off. Oh, yeah, this is going to be tougher by the second. Oh, my God. This is yeah. impressive. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I, I'll be honest, when I first wrote it, I didn't think as much about what you were doing with Tox Effects as I probably should have. But, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So, I guess for me, at number three, this is where I have the Wobbuffets. Um, Bubba -bubba the, the, the defensive core here is just unbelievable. Venusaur and Heatran, enough said. But you get a Raquinid who can eat up fire, who can eat up, you know, honestly, even ground-type moves because it's bug-type. He can hit really hard physically uh, because of Water Bubble. And then you have Gudra, who is Sap Sipper, who covers some of your grass weaknesses, but even though you don't have very many. And then you have Honchkrow, who's a great, you know, attacker. You have some really good fast Pokemon, like Toxicroak, Tapu Lele with a Scarf, Alolan Raichu. Uh, you're, you don't have the fastest team, but you have such a bulky and scary team, it really doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and 
Tapu Lele is looking to match up really well against almost every team. So I don't see you having a problem sweeping on most in most matches with her. So that's my opinion. What about you, Isaac? Okay, so this is where I put the Crooked Isles. Um, and I, I know that there's a lot of weaknesses in here and um, a lot of cracks in the armor, so to speak. But, um, Brandon, just from past seasons, you have pulled some stuff out of nowhere. Um, I like to think that I'm one of the m more creative coaches, but I think you're at least up there with me, if not better. Um, and you have Shivali and Mew, some of the most creative Pokemon you can have, um, giving you creative freedom with Pokemon. I just think that's a little scary. Um, and Cartana, I mean, that, that's an Ultra Beast. That's just an ad. Uh, Chestnut's a, a lot of bulk that I don't think gets enough credit. Um, and I, I know a lot of people consider Garchomp better than Mega Garchomp. But Mega Garchomp does have its uses in having that higher attack power. And I think it would be unexpected to bring it on occasions. And I think you would be one of the few people in the league who could pull that off. So that is why I have you at three. Cool. Well, thank you, sir. What about you, Hamilton? Uh, my third is the um, is Zoo Batman, and <laughs> their their pool is pretty freaking impressive. I gotta say, like um, they've got Mega Alakazam and Tapu Koko as just very efficient special attackers, especially because they are both crazy fast. They're crazy fast. You got Tapu Koko, which it's just very good to have against any other team that has a Tapu, because you switch you switch in Tapu Koko. Oh, the terrain's gone. Then you just bolt switch back out, and you you're ready to just do it again and just steal some momentum away from them and hit them with a very high power volt switch yet again. You have Celesteela, which is probably the Pokemon I've used the most in OU since Sun and Moon came out. That thing is very very difficult to take down. Mm -hmm. Even if you have super effective attacks for it, I've seen this thing just eat flamethrowers. Especially after a beast boost, my god. <laughs> and a little an executor is something I don't think we should count out also. It can be very unpredictable. Hippowdon has proved itself in the past as just an absolutely punishing wall to take down. I don't, and it's just going to make Celesteela even harder to take down. I don't think Tapu Koko's oh, and Chandelure are going to appreciate the chip damage. But considering how well that does still combo with Celesteela, he look, he's going to have a really, really powerful defensive core. And then you got Ditto, which can just uh, just punish anyone for bringing Pokemon that are good. And then just Weavile and Bisharp work as great re as, work as just great revenge killers and late game cleaners. And then you got, Sh and then you got Chandelure and Nidoking, which Nidoking can have a very va a, an extremely varied moveset, and Chandelure can be a real, real problem to take down. And then you have a little bit of Mamola, which not really would be my first decision for a bulky water type, not by not by a long shot, but it, it can suck up a lot of hits, for sure. Yeah, this team is going to be scary. <laughs> uh, for number two, I actually have the Charmillionaires. And, you know, these top two, honestly... I, I have no idea which one's honestly going to, you know, be played better. They're both terrifying. I personally think that the slightly less scary one is the Charmillionaires, but I, I still don't like the fact that half of his team fits his playstyle perfectly. <laughs> uh, Salamence with Dragon Dance, Zerkitry with Beast Boost. Yeah, that's um, what happens when you wait when you wait till everybody else has got like five points. Yeah, yeah, and then Scolipede with you know speed boost and baton pass, Victini who just smashes things, Mega Pidgeot, Manaphy who has Tail Glow, Breloom who has Sub Focus Punch and Swords Dance and all kinds of crazy stuff, Clefable and Cofagrigus who are crazy scary walls. Um, so I mean, and they complement each other pretty well. But I guess, you know, if I were to say something about this team, it's that, you know, I can't say anything. That's the problem. These two teams are literally, like, I, 
I can't really pick anything out that's necessarily too, you know, too much of a flaw. I mean, he's got his defogger, he's got a spinner, he's got like all the right immunities. He's only got two Pokemon that can fly, but that's not even really necessarily a bad thing. Nailago is a great suicide lead and a pretty good sweeper. He's just got a lot for what fits him well. Last season and in the Captain's Clash, he played a bit differently than he has before. And the two seasons he won, he played with um, some really powerful sweepers and some good bulk, but mainly some really strong sweepers. And he's got that again. And this is probably, in my opinion, his best draft. And so I'm, I'm interested to see how many games he just sweeps like he did in Season 2 and in, uh, in the Monotype Masters. So, What about you, Isaac? What did you have for number two? Um, I, I'm kind of with you on it's hard to pick one. Um, I'll definitely, my, my reasoning will become more clear with my pick on why number one, not as much on why number two. Um, but my number two is because I'm Zoo Batman. Um, and I mean, he, he's just got some fantastic Pokemon in there. And honestly, we've seen him with Kapowdon and Ditto before, and I am not looking forward to that. Um, my thing is with Mega Alakazam, if you have a high attacker that knows Sucker Punch, Mega Alakazam can be a bit of a glass cannon. Um, but at the same time, it's still got high special attack, and I. With, with the rest of his team, I don't even think he necessarily has to put it in there. Um, but as stated earlier, I think it's always a good thing to have an option for a Mega, um, whether or not you use it. Um, and Tapu Koko is just a monster. I expect great things from this man. Um, he, he's, done great, <laughs> he's done great things in the past, and I foresee a very good season coming from him. So. Vote Sue Batman, 2017. <laughs> what about you, Hamilton? So, I think it's no secret that uh, last season did not go very well for me. <laughs> I had five NU picks because I got very I got very married to an idea of what I wanted to do and uh, was altogether very stubborn about it throughout the entire draft, even when it became pretty clear that it was not going to happen. So, this time around, I thought, okay, I'm just going to pick like two or three things that I really know that I want and I'm going to be flexible about it. So I got a few things. Mega Venusaur was one of them, um, and which I had a bulk, of, which I had a backup before in, in Tank Rope. I said, I want a bulky water type. Maybe I'll go with something like a Swampert. Get a rocker out of it. And that was kind of it. That was kind of the extent of the planning that I did for the thing. And it, I think it honestly worked out very well for me. This is miles better. Than my uh, team, than my team in season three. It's hundreds of miles better than my team last season. And, um, and I just remember, remember just drafting things reactively, as opposed to just as opposed to a set plan. Like for example, uh, I got Drapion because I realized, oh hey, I don't. It would be very useful to have a psychic immunity because then Mega Venusaur becomes that much better. Or, oh hey. There's someone that looks like they're drafting a rain set. Let's grab Gastrodon and Toxicroak. Or, I'm a little weak to physical attackers. Let's get Dusclops and start burning things. And um, if I had maybe one, one or two concerns, it's that my Spinner and my Stealth Rocker are one and the same. And that I wish I had a faster physical attacker. But I do have, a, a, have two Sucker Punchers. And that's just great. I have a very solid core, I think two very solid cores, I think, with Heatran, I recommended Venusaur, and then Gujar Heatran, Tapu Lele, which I cannot believe I walked away with, considering how many points were still left in some people. Well, and, I don't know, I think this is going to be a very solid season for me. I'm very excited. You know what I just realized? Nobody, yes. nobody picked Mega Metagurus. Yep. Yeah, even with I don't all get the, that. It's literally the, the best uh, mega right now. <laughs> for the benefit for the benefit of the audience, audience, just so you know, we uh briefly discussed banning Mega Metagross for this season. Then we decided, nah, it's fine. It'll uh, be, be like a high price because someone will want it to counter the top boost. Nobody bothered. Yeah, really surprising. But uh 
So my number one, as you guys can figure now, is this is because I'm Zoo Batman, uh, and this is a lot from my experience and what I know he, he to be good at, and he's very good at uh, predictions. He's very good at playing, very smart, uh, and that's not to say that the other coaches aren't, but he is very tactical uh, in his playing and. Sometimes it makes him a little predictable. Sometimes it makes him unpredictable. Sometimes it means you're backed into a corner and there's nothing that you can do about it. You can't even, like, make, you know, necessarily any crazy plays to, like, get out of there. And coupled with the fact that he has a very fast revenge-killing sweeping uh, set of Pokemon. So this, for a little context for you guys who have not uh, been around since Season 3... If you want to go watch some of those uh, videos, I believe we started doing the recap videos then. So go check them out if you haven't. Uh, but Season 3, I had, in my opinion, the best team I, I will ever have and had at the time. Uh, I had Talonflame and Weavile among Scizor and Sylveon and some others. Um, but in my opinion, Talonflame and Weavile won me most games because they just hit so hard. <laughs> and Sylveon came clutch in the end and won me the tournament, but those two were just absolute monsters. And so now I'm looking at Tapu Koko and Weavile among the others. And that's just, that's wrong. <laughs> Tapu Koko is way worse than Talonflame ever was, in my opinion. Uh, he doesn't have priority, but he's faster than Talonflame was. He hits really hard with his electric attacks, but he has the ability to hit specially or physically. And that's pretty scary. He's got Weavile, who's still a not a lot of monster. Uh, yeah, and not a lot of priority moves that really hit it that hard. Yeah, exactly. And then he's got Mega Alakazam, who's also really fast and hits really hard, and can have a pretty wide move pool uh, as far as what he can hit. Uh, there's very few things that can truly wall Mega Alakazam. And then he's got reliable walls in Hippowdon and Celesteela. He's got Starmie for, you know, revenge killing, for being somewhat of a tank. You know, same with Chandelure and Bisharp. He's got Nidoking as a wild card. And he's got Aloma Mola for any reason that he would need, like a, a tanky, a bulky water type. But I'm looking at Celesteela, and that's probably up there in the top five as far as best draft Pokemon. Um, and I think the reason that is is because you can build it to be whatever set you want it to be each week. Yeah, it has the same moves, but kind of like Sil Valley, because of Beast Boost in this case, you can make it a physical sweeper, and it has Earthquake and Heavy Slam and other things. You can make it a bulky monster, and when it does get a kill, if it you know if you're stalling out, it could buff its highest defensive stat, like defense or special defense, and make it even harder to deal with. Uh, you can make it a special sweeper. I don't think that you can make it go up in speed. It really just depends on what the highest stat is each week. But the fact that you have the ability to use it in such a way where it can be a sweeper, it can be in a, a, an incredible defensive wall, and the fact that it gets a totemize, which is basically agility for steel types, that, that just makes it so versatile. And it's going to be so hard to deal with in the hands of something like... Uh, in the hands of something like you know, David, the coach of the Zoo Batman. Which is why I put him here is because knowing his play style, knowing how he's used some of these threats in the past, like Hippowdon and Ditto, which he's very used to using, including Bisharp as well. And then having things like Alakazam, Tapu Koko, and Celesteela, I am I am gonna have such a personally such a hard time playing against him. So yeah, I just it's gonna be rough. It's gonna be rough. What about you, Isaac? Well, as it's kind of got narrowed down, you can tell my number one is Bichar Millionaires, whom I played the first week, yay me. Um, but, so my reasoning behind it, um, Daniel, I've seen, does great with the the walls um, that we, we've seen from him, and I think he plays a really good stall game. But if we go back to whenever we had that uber- tears that we could grab grab one from and he got Greninja <laughs> can we can we look at that team I mean he works wonders with what I consider a hyper offense team 
Yeah, season uh, th- season three was a time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and and what I'm seeing here is a very very strong hyper offense team. Um, you have Zerkatri, Vitini, Salamence, Manaphy, Metapidgeot, Hoopa Unbound. A lot of Pokemon that just hit hard. And, um, I mean, they may not necessarily be the fastest on the planet. I mean, Mega Pidgeot's got some pretty good speed. But, I mean, you, you scarf any one of these or band or spets one of them. I mean, these things are going to be monsters. And I think that this is what Daniel does best. Um, so this is why I have him at number one is because I think he has a great team for him. Yeah. Um, and that's why I placed him over Zubatman. All right. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. I think he's going to be really scary to face. What about you, Hamilton? Yeah, I agree. The Charmillionaires are absolutely the team to watch out for this season. And they just have... Um, Maybe, like the one bad thing I can say is that maybe they could use some more bulk, but um, when you look at the fact that they have not just Scolipede, not just Zerkatry, not just Salamence, not just Victini, not just Piggy, Pidgeot, not just Extra Drill, not just Manaphy, but also a friggin' Hoopa Unbound, and uh, I'm starting to think that might not really matter all that much. Just. Uh, Man, there's not really anything on this team I can really call out as saying, eh, maybe I would change this around. Just, wow. Yeah. yeah. This is crushing. Absolutely crushing. This is going, the Charmillionaires are going to give, are going to give us one heck of a fight. Yeah, and, for uh, sure. And they're already, they already have one of the highest win percentages in the league. And, and they have very much proved themselves in the past before. So, Yeah. This is gonna be a, this is gonna be something to watch out for, very much so. For sure. Yeah, I'm just hoping I hit my stride before he does in this first <laughs> week. Yeah, I can tell you. I think a lot of us, uh, you know, as as happy or unhappy as we are with our drafts, I think a lot of us are gonna want to make that trade in week four, <laughs> that free agency, uh, to deal with maybe some of these things that we're looking at now, but. Uh, I think that's it. Ironically, mm. ironically, the best person equipped to deal with Hoopa is the guy who drafted almost an entire bug team. Yeah, yeah. So maybe that will be a nice little uh, counter. <laughs> is uh, is anti off? That'd be pretty please cool. Please let just just let just let please let Butterfree take it down. I will. Oh, that would be beautiful. I'll be I'll be able to die happy if that happens. All right. Well, I think uh, I think that's about it, guys. Uh, thank you all for coming out and doing this and talking about this stuff looking forward to actually playing and seeing what happens no problem so we completely destroyed our intention of a 45 minute video right yeah sorry about that guys (laughs) i know y'all are watching or listening patiently sorry we tried but this is this is something that we enjoy talking about so i hope you guys enjoyed listening um but other than that look out for the weekly recap videos in the future and definitely watch the replays um, if you want access to the Discord or if you're interested in joining this GTA for Season 6 in the future, uh, be sure to you know, fill out the application online at the website in the description. And uh, we'll, uh, you know, us leaders and stuff will talk about it and review it and get in touch with you at some point before that season starts. But regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys will leave a like if you enjoyed it. And if you didn't, you can leave us a nasty comment or just a critical comment telling us what we can do better in the future. But thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all next time.